So here you're showing a multi OS. Uh, one one little Android device can output Ubuntu at the same time on HDMI. Yes. So what we are doing here is it's kind of a docking use case, if you'd like. So basically you have the mobile phone running the standard mobile OS, high level OS just like Android. You go there, go home and you dock it. So what you see is like a PC-like experience. So you can see that uh, YouTube running on a Firefox browser. So there is a lot of scope for improvement on the um, on the Ubuntu side, we can accelerate the X and we can also accelerate Flash. So these are purely software version we are running now. But these are the full Ubuntu stack running along with Android Gingerbread. So this is just a demo? What the, You haven't optimized some things? What is it? Did you still so this is just like a prototype. There are a lot of scope for improvement just like uh, accelerating the X server so that you can have better scrolling and uh, browsing experience. So who would do that? Is that TI or Canonical or who would do all these things? Uh, Partners? It, it would depend on the customer requirements. But TI can, can help. Customer can work also directly on the TI code. So how is the TI uh, positioned in terms of uh, memory bandwidth and uh, to be able to actually, from a phone, have this idea of outputting a full desktop computer experience? You have pretty fast memory bandwidth, right? Yes. On our 4430, we are at 6.5 gigabytes per second, and going forward in 4460, it's 7.4, and 4470, uh, on my 5 will uh, take it to 8.5 gigabytes per second. 8.5 gigabytes per second. So that's ample enough to run a bunch of tabs, uh, lots of flash. Yes. All these things. Multiple tabs, multiple um, flash videos. Uh, along with other things which is running on the mobile OS. And if you can show, for example, you have some flash. Uh... Yes. So when he's setting that up, maybe uh, I just want to mention uh, some schedule uh, information. So today, everything we're showing is on 4430, uh, one gigahertz device, dual core XN9. We'll have our 4460. We will take the dual core XN9 to 1.5 gigahertz. That will be in production in the third quarter of this year, so pretty soon. We have samples already. This is our main platform for the uh, Honeycomb and Ice Cream Sandwich development uh, at TI. And then we have the 4470, which will take you to another level in terms of graphic performance. We'll have a different uh, SGX544 graphic core on this device, sampled in the uh, October time frame of uh, 2011. And then the 5 itself will have dual Cortex A15, changing ARM core for this device, uh, 2 gigahertz each on each of the A15, and we'll have dual SGX544 a graphic core from Imagination. So really transforming again the mobile landscape with over 5. And it's sampling very soon? It's sampling in October of this year. It's like 3, 4 months? 3, 4 months, yeah, I mean, yes, 5 months. Not very far, far away. Not very far, so we are very busy uh, preparing for uh, sampling of this device. And you mentioned, uh, while you were talking, you were mentioning Honeycomb Ice Cream Sandwich yes. TI. Yes. So that's ready. That's so the 4460 is uh, the device that we are using for our baseline development on uh, Honeycomb and Ice Cream Sandwich. We are working very closely with, uh, with Google uh, on both of those uh, developments. Now back to the 4470 and the 5430, all the user experience that we have at Computex this year, whether it's Flash or DualOS or video conferencing or gaming, etc., will be ported on those platforms, will be augmented on those platforms. And that is what we are going to demonstrate at CES and at Mobile World Congress in uh, January and February of next year. Yeah. All right, and then you're showing some so flash. So what you see here is the Flash 10.3 running on Gingerbread, rendering on a screen which is um, 1024 by 768. So this is a standard video matrix clip, which is um, S264 base profile, uh, 720p resolution. So you will see that, okay, it is rendering at full frame rate, 30 frames per second. Nice. And uh, so there was, there's a product out, the Playbook, and people are saying it's the best Flash experience they've ever seen. Like they can just open a whole bunch of tabs. Yes. TI powered. TI powered. So this is, of course, this is an Android implementation. What's really interesting with this Flash implementation is it's only partial GPU acceleration, which means, of course, we are accelerating the video uh, decoder, but the composition of the graphic and video plans are still done on the CPU side. So we're just accelerating a few video rendering routines on the GPU. With that implementation, we are able to deliver 720p, 30 frames per second. In fact, we're even able to deliver 1080p at 25 frames per second, which is amazing with just a partial GPU. When we move to the next version of Flash Player, which is Flash Player 11, on Honeycomb, and we are working with Adobe, you know, making that happen, we'll have this uh, probably in August, September timeframe. 
then we will have full 1080p 30 frames per second, but with a fairly low load on the CPU side, which means from a power distribution standpoint, this will be, again, probably the best flash implementation on Android. Nice. So basically, Adam, uh, Adobe has been making huge work in the Android ecosystem, and a lot yes. of it has been focused on the ARM part of the processors thus far, and they try to get more and more of it of, uh, on the GPU. On the GPU, yes, exactly. So they don't want to load ARM uh, processors too much for, yeah. for, for two reasons. First, because you have to have enough uh, bandwidth available from this processor to do other tasks, and also from a power consumption standpoint. They are offloading as much as possible to the GPU. Right? So that's what's going to happen with Flash Player 11, or Serrano as they call it. They will have full GPU build for this uh, implementation. They will have OpenGLS 2.0 3D graphic acceleration as well. And they will have what they call stage video, which is the composition happening on the GPU side. Can you say anything about Chrome OS? What can you say about Chrome OS? Yeah. <laughs> you have some Chromium demos you have shown before, so yes. in theory yes. it can work, but there's nothing yes. they can be said yet. But uh, how far away is it from, uh, like, uh, basically this is a full desktop, and you, 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 you can promise that it will work if somebody wants to make it? Yes, I mean, we are demonstrating on Ubuntu today. I guess you could do exactly the same thing if using Chrome OS instead of using Ubuntu. That will work just as exactly the same way. But there's still some work to be done by TI or by the partners, or... Or is everything ready and they well, just have to make it actually? TI can do it if a customer is asking us to do it, but this is actually not that much work to do this kind of dual OS implementation. And take care of the full Neon optimization and full everything that you have and just use well, it? Well, if you want to do more optimization, then obviously more work then right. to be done. But uh, for a simple uh, prototype like this one, uh, it took us just uh, a few weeks or more. Weeks so, far. Yeah. so this is the end, what do you call this, the result? This is a performance table or performance histogram after you play the flash, the, the flash content at 720p30. So you can see here that you are truly exceeding 30 frames per second for the whole duration of Basically the... Basically you render the full frame rate, yeah. There's a flash. Yeah. That's flash 10.3. On top of Android. Yes. Nice. 10.3 really accelerated things, but it's going to go even much further in August with the 10.11. 11. 11. Yes. 11.